Morning, everybody. Happy hump day. Welcome to the News Agenda with me, Tom Waits, <clears throat> Fleet Street Fox. And today I'm joined by the Mirror's North East reporter, Jeremy Armstrong. He's looking very smart today because he's going into the office. Morning, Jeremy. Good morning. Uh, now, I'll try for my, my poor throat to get through this, but this is the People's Paper Review, so get into the comments, ask us your questions. Those of you listening later on podcast will just have to see if objecting to what the porn star says in any way proves your case that nothing untoward happened. So, what have we got for you today? Well, the mirror has splashed on how pubs will be allowed to stay open until 1am if England or Scotland makes it to the semi-final of the Euros. Problem is, if Scotland does the unthinkable and gets further in the competition, it's only going to apply in England and Wales. Let's hope John Swinney uh, sees the electoral point in doing the same north of the border. Not that Scotland's going to get to the semis anyway, but it's, it should, should be there if they get the chance. Now, on a similar point, I want to take us to page 19 of the paper, where Jeremy has a story, and this time it's about FA Cup replays. Now, Jeremy, can you take us through this? To the uninitiated, what's a replay and why do they need saving? Of course, yes. So in the early stages of the FA Cup, the big dream for smaller clubs for the minnows in the world's oldest football tournament is to draw a big team into into getting a actually ideally get a home draw and then a replay is when you have to go away. So for example, uh if you're Colchester United and you draw Liverpool, the dream would be to to draw and then go away to Anfield and there'd be a crowd of sixty thousand and it's a great day out for the team. Obviously fantastic for the fans and a huge payday. So there was a, a, a an instance recently a little while ago, admittedly, um, 2006, where Exeter um, did exactly that and earned around about a million pounds. And um, Tony Cascarino, the footballer, was joking about how he's a cult hero in Exeter because he was the man who drew the balls out of the hat in that particular year and, and you know, and he gave them this plum tie. So there's a very serious point to it. It's now been decided by the FA that um, replays can no longer fit into the calendar and obviously you've got the kind of modernity versus the history really the main reason that um replays are being uh, axed is because of the demands of european football and the argument is that you know you have 700 and approximately 730 teams enter the fa cup in the first round they're all dreaming of these big paydays uh, which can be absolutely crucial to the local communities quite often you you find that that you know million pounds is used not only to to keep the club going but to invest in facilities all weather pitches so kids use them junior clubs use them walking football elderly you know becomes a bit of a hub for the community so it's not just about football it's not just about the fa cup and its history but um we believe the principle should remain. We believe that they should have replays, and that's what the campaign's all about, really. Right. So what do you think, everybody? Have you been to an FA Cup uh, replay? Do you think that there's some kind of magic about this? Um, do you think the FA Cup matters as much as some of the big tournaments that these guys are playing in now, like the Euros, like the... Um like the Champions League, uh, you know, it's, it's all about kind of the smaller clubs, really, I suppose, whether people give that as much attention as they do the bigger ones. Mike says, scrapping replays is being done simply to prevent bigger clubs having too many games at the cost of smaller clubs losing their potential payday. So this is basically, as I get it, Jeremy, it's about spreading the financial and the fan benefits of playing these bigger clubs. So it's always it's always fun. I like thinking of the, the sort of the highly paid prima donnas having to slum it in a League Three dressing room. You know, doesn't have Ferrari leather upholstered personal armchairs or whatever in it. Um, is this about? As it says there in the, in the headline in the piece, is this about elitism? Is this about classism? Is this about you know the little guy going up against the big guns? Which is one, one of those uh, that David and Goliath sense is one of the, the benefits of that FA Cup, isn't it? And the fact that you can potentially win it even if you're very very little. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the FA argument that it's that it's going to interfere with other calendars. Are they are they thinking that it's just not really necessary? That it's not a fundamental part of the British game and it doesn't matter it's 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 uh, it's very difficult because I think you cannot get away from the fact that it's being driven by the European football the European competition and the fact that there are more games and they're saying that they take priority and the Premier League takes priority and there are many fans you know the FSA are behind us in terms of the campaign they represent about 600,000 fans their argument is that the FA Cup should be the priority not European football because because of the history, because of the kudos of it to a certain degree. I suppose many, many people right around the world know about the FA Cup, know what it stands for, believe in its history and tradition. And that's been it's been kinda 
a part of it at least is being lost. I mean, the FA argument is that you can still get lucrative payday's, you will still get the the minnows against the big clubs, but obviously if they um, have comparative success, if they manage to draw in their first game, then it goes to penalties, and and that's the end of it. You know, that's the end of that yeah. that match. So they would contend that the the David V. Goliath thing's still there. Uh, and you know that element has been maintained. It's just that you can't you you can't get the replay, which obviously earns huge amounts of money. And if you take if you take a step back and analyse why the decision has been made, there's no doubt whatsoever it has been made to benefit the elite clubs in the Premier League. And and mm-hmm. even if they filter the money down, they're all, they're talking about giving more money to the smaller clubs in order to you know mitigate the loss of the potential really mitigate the loss of of income from a FA Cup run. It's a, it's a very difficult thing to define the magic of the FA Cup, but many of the great moments, my, my team, Newcastle United, were beaten by Hereford United and a chap called Ronnie Radford, who no one had heard of before, scored an absolute screamer from about 30 yards. It became an iconic moment. John Motson went mad. It was on match of the day. A long time ago, I accept there can be very rare moments, but that kind of intangible thing for fans in particular for you know people who love the game who turn in week in week out at places like Woking or, or Worcester or whatever you know is it as important to to consider their needs as it is for the the people who turn up at Manchester United or Spurs or, or whoever is in Europe on, on any given year so I think I think it is a fairly potent argument to be honest yeah, so the FA seems to be saying that well, some matches are going to be, end up being two matches. So it's just look, it's, it's so much easier on the calendar just to have one yes. and have it decided there and then on the day, and everyone hasn't got to travel twice and all the rest of it. Carly says, yeah, I'm also in support of the FA being priority ahead of the European. Arsenal, as an example, never won any European trophy, but they're kings of the FA. Um, is there more money in the Euros? Yes. Wow, the well, there we go. There we go. Problem solved. Uh, so this is a fairly fresh mirror campaign. We've only just sort of started this up, I think, very recently. The FA isn't renowned for listening to what fans or the media want. Where do you think this this goes next, Jeremy? Are the FA going to be forced to capitulate on this? They're going to give in to the fans. They've got a meeting on Friday. I mean, to to be candid, we've done it on principle. Really, uh, they've already announced the fixtures for next season, so it would be difficult to get them to do a turnaround on that. In my in my opinion, what we what we might get is a is a victory in the sense that. In the first round, for example, and this some people would say this would still dilute the, the the tournament, but it's an option. If the minnows draw, you know, the Premier League elite, they could opt if they're first out the hat and they play at home, they could opt to play away, so that you get that element of a replay in the sense that you don't play the game, but you and you don't therefore congest the calendar if one, if one can put it that way, but you still get the payday of playing away. So. While that would be sad because it would lessen their opportunity of winning to a certain extent, because obviously home, there's no doubt home is an advantage in in that context. At least they would get the money. That that's a possibility. I would say that 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 may be a kind of a step on the road to 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 trying to improve things for the smaller clubs. Uh, the campaign though is about giving, like so many of our campaigns, a bit like the Dangerous Dog campaign. It's giving people a voice who don't have a voice. It's people who are supporting those smaller clubs, who do feel aggrieved about it, who do feel that they're being forgotten again and, and aren't being prioritised. It's giving them the opportunity to say, look, we don't agree with this because otherwise it would just be forgotten and the decision would be made and everybody would move on. So at least it gives them a platform to try and make a change. And, and, and if the change isn't made, at least give them a voice. Yeah. Well, let's see how it goes and where it goes next. But hopefully there'll be some kind of movement anyway because it doesn't seem to be that it's a terribly popular idea. And, of course, lots of people can't get to go to the Euros if they're being held somewhere else entirely. Um, one thing, Jeremy, I think you've got your laptop on your knees have you? because it's making me feel seasick, mate. It, was, it, it is. Sorry, sorry. Shall I put it on a desk? <laughs> oh, it, was a, it was a try and get slightly better laid by the window. I must have probably No, it's okay. if, if you just, or just try and keep your knees very, very still. Imagine Stormy Daniels is nearby, but your wife <laughs> stay very still. All right, and moving on to the next story of the day. Speaking of Stormy Daniels, while everyone is moaning about a dead duck leader and an uninspiring opposition in this country, over on the other side of the pond, they wish they weren't dealing with lunatics because Donald Trump's hush money trial stepped up a notch yesterday when the hushy Stephanie Clifford, aka Stormy Daniels, 
took the stand. Now, this was a move that quite surprised Trump's lawyers. They were not expecting it to happen that day. They had about five minutes' notice, no time to prepare. And what she had to say was pretty dramatic. Now, can you take us through this, Jeremy? Because, you know, she ain't hushing up no more, is she? What did she say? I mean, she, as they say, the devil's in the detail. And, and she gave a very, very vivid account of their sexual encounter um, at a golf tournament, um, which he denies. And, and he just categorically denies it, but she gave all this detail about him being in silk pyjamas and then getting changed and then putting his boxer shorts on, mentioning his daughter, which was really toe-curled, and saying that, you know, he was reminded of his daughter before they slept together. Her embarrassment at it as well, which I thought was 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 equally kind of plausible, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so she his, to think it was really grim, and she wished yeah, she had the name. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you know, you sort of think, right, what's in what what's in this for her? Because it's highly embarrassing, even for a, you know, a, a, a porn star to admit it <laughs> that she slept with, <laughs> with with Donald Trump. No so rabbit, is it? <clears throat> it for, for me anyway? It's it's had the you know it had the. That had the ring of truth, really, in, in what she said. Her account, I thought, was very plausible. He was deeply embarrassed by it. He was warned again because he was swearing and shaking his head all the time. But, I mean, an absolute car crash for Donald Trump. An absolute car crash. If you, it, It's almost impossible to imagine that in an English context. Can you imagine something as Tokyo as that happening just what, prior to an election? This, ma this man wants to be president, and, he, and, and, he, and you're listening to a, a porn star giving a vivid account of their sexual encounters. It's, it's almost impossible to contemplate, really. Yeah, I can't imagine it happening for either Rishi Sunak or Keir Starmer. I can, I can kind of picture something not a million miles away if, if it were Boris Johnson. But uh, luckily, we haven't been subjected to it. So one of the things that... This is, basically, this is all the detail that Trump admits he paid to not let the world hear, right? This is all the stuff. He spent 130 grand not letting people hear this, and now he's spending millions and people are hearing it. Um, Jennifer says, in a way, I believe it because he's being too defensive. Of course it happened. But does it matter? I suppose, Jennifer. So one of the things that he said was when, when, when that she said was that when they were sort of chatting, as she got to his suite, um, he said that, you, you know, you're very blonde and very intelligent. You remind me of my daughter shortly before they were at it. Now, some of the details they really weren't allowed to say. So Stephanie has told her story a few times, including various references describing uh, Trump's genitalia and so on, which I'm not going to go into here, but you can Google it, folks, if you're that desperate. But they were intervening constantly about the detail that she was coming out with. They objected to the court learning that Trump had told Stormy he and Melania, his wife, didn't share a bed. They objected to the fact she claimed to have swatted his bum with a rolled up magazine with his face on the cover. They objected to her discussing the position they had sex in, which just FYI was the most boring position. Um, it's this kind of detail, exactly the detail that he, he tried to hush up with a $130,000 check, Jeremy. Is that going to damage the case, do you think? Because, I mean, the case isn't about any of this stuff, is it? The case is about whether he pretended the money was for something else. Well, there's a very serious point to it, though, isn't there? Because obviously he did it prior to an election in which he was elected president. So the, the, the key issue, really, if you take a step back, is would this detail, had it been made public prior to the election, meant that he meant that he lost the election? No, you, you, you know, you can't, you can't, say whether that's true or not but that's the key issue in terms of the court case um and what he's covered up and, and, and how he's done it illegally it's like the, it's the old cliche isn't it the cover-up's always worse than the actual deed in, in many ways and that's what he's being done for now you know no one can make a judgment on that but there is a really cogent argument that says it is germane and it is important because that as you've just rightly pointed out it's not just about the fact that's what he was trying to cover up it's the fact that he did cover it up and it didn't come out prior to an election, and that could have influenced the, the most important election in, 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 in their calendar, i.e., you know, the, the race to be president. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's really quite ironic, isn't it? There are many very amusing aspects to it, but the fact that it's, it could ruin his chances of becoming president this time around is, is, is a really strange dynamic in this, isn't it? Because that's what you've just said. It worked first time around, but it hasn't worked second time around. The, the bizarre, the even more bizarre thing about this is whether it makes any difference to his running for president, because there are many, many, many people who just vote for him anyway, mm, which, which, I find, like, which I find even more extraordinary in many ways. Yeah, it's a bit like Al Capone being um, done for tax avoidance. It is. 
And then sort of, you know, there being a, a ban after him setting up any legitimate businesses. <laughs> legitimate businesses weren't the issue, were they? So Mike says, if Trump is still elected after being found guilty of illicit payments to a porn star, does this make him go, ah, oh, the people, Champignon? Um, we're not going to discuss that, Mike, because it's, <laughs> it's still early. I'm still digesting my frosties. Go away. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that... Uh, you know, the, the talking about here is whether or not this really damages Trump's uh, position with the electorate. What do you think, everybody? Would you still vote? Are, are there any Americans out there? Did you vote Trump last time? Would you vote for him this time? Michael and I said Trump should be prevented from standing for president. Unfortunately, the founding fathers who wrote the Constitution in the US didn't imagine they would ever have to deal with a Trump. So they didn't put this in the small print. It does perhaps need some kind of a codicil to the... Um, some kind of amendment to the Constitution to cater this kind of thing. Steve said, <coughs> morning, Steve, how can the US still consider him for president, guilty or not, of all he's accused of? Can he ever be trusted to control the nuclear arsenal? Can he ever be trusted to control his tiny hands um, and any other sort of smaller parts of his anatomy? It is astonishing, really. I don't even trust him to do anything. So... The question we've got to go to, I suppose, is can this damage his re-election? The Trump supporter polling seems to show they just think he's he's masculine and more virile for all this kind of stuff. It doesn't damage his standing with his base at all. Trump haters already despise him, so it makes no difference to them either. At the moment, Trump is ahead in the polls. Paul says Trump was always an illegitimate president. These payments prove that. But what's interesting in this case is that the judge, to me anyway, the judge has ruled there's no TV coverage. All right. Normally, American courts are pretty often streamed, aren't they? They're all public, same as it was going on, despite the massive public interest in this. So for once, American courts have to be like the British ones. They're relying on court artists and journalists sort of observing people when they're in the dark or whatever, <clears throat> telling you what's going on. He can't play up to the cameras, although he's still playing up a bit, isn't he, Jeremy, as you said? If they... Do you think if they did let the cameras in, would it be better or worse? I mean, he's already on, what, a final warning for all the contempt that he's been committing. Do you think cameras would make a difference? Absolutely, yeah, unequivocally. I mean, if that evidence had been on TV yesterday, can you imagine the A, the audience for it and B, the impact of it? Right, but none of us would be doing any work. We'd just be watching it, it, it all day. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. It does make a big difference. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, little, I'm a little surprised at that, but then... Because of his behaviour and the run-up to it, you, you may contend that the judge's decision is correct because he because he's been guilty of contempt ten times and fined ten times, and unfortunately that does you know that does something for the legal process, doesn't it? So the people watch him and think he's a potential president, and look what he's doing, you know, in a courtroom. Maybe that played into it. Maybe that played into it to a certain extent because of his open contempt for the proceedings. She yes. didn't want that seen by millions and millions of people because of the the long-term damage it might do to to the inverted commas justice system. But I mean, in terms of, you know, what that would have been yesterday, that would have been prime time viewing, as you've just described, and millions and millions and millions of people would have seen that. And I do think the impact of it would have been far greater, personally. Yeah, I think the journalist in me just wants to see it. But the, the human beings going, maybe it's a good idea not to point the cameras at Trump through some of this. Although I think <clears throat> it may do more to damage his election chances if his voter could see that he, voters could see that, you know, he's falling asleep in the middle of the case like all old men would do after lunch. Uh, Paul says it's such a proud day for the Trump family. I haven't heard any word from Ivanka yet. Presumably she's still cringing and washing her eyes somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> it's astonishing stuff that we're hearing from, from the court, and there's bound to be more of it. But as Jeremy said, um, Donald has already been accused of contempt uh, and found guilty of it, actually, quite a few times, been fined by the judge. Carly says he's not going to be elected. He's ruined it all, guilty or not. Guilty is being involved in this scandal is way out of it. Um, there's actually a risk, isn't there, that Trump could go, go to jail before the, the case is even finished. Yes, yeah, and, uh, you know, it's quite it's quite a real risk, you know, when you think about the seriousness of the charge and the, and the judge's attitude towards it, because it's just basically saying it didn't happen. Now, I don't know. Everybody can make a judgment on her evidence and the detail of her evidence. Uh, does it sound like something that's been completely made up? Mm. Personally, I don't think so. But obviously, you know, they're going to have to make their own judgment. Yeah, and if he if he keeps coming out and saying things outside the court, which the court has yet to decide upon, then the judge is going to just eventually, as, as all he said, I don't want to jail you because you're a presidential nominee. You're a former president. It's all going to make things very, very messy. Can we just stop being stupid, please? 
<coughs> but if he carries on, he's going to have to jail him. And that means Trump in Rikers Island next to Harvey Weinstein. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and, you know, what impact is that going to have on his base? They've jailed Donald kind of thing. That would be just play into all their senses yeah. of being some kind of conspiracy. Whereas yeah. the Trump haters are going to go, well, of course we can't vote. You know, he's, he's horrible. He's a criminal. We can't possibly vote for him. But, <clears throat> you know, the, the fact that people get accused of things or even get jailed for stuff, Julian Assange fans prove the point there. It doesn't make any damn difference to some of them if they're determined to to say what they want to think the, the best or the worst of someone. Um, so I suppose the question is, where does this go next, right? So this trial is going to try to prove the money was paid in a deliberate attempt to subvert an election. And Trump presumably is going to argue that firstly it didn't happen, but he got his lawyer to do something that was perfectly legal and it made not a jot of difference. I mean, he would say that he, you know, his quote from before the election, he could shoot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue and it wouldn't matter, his voters would still back him. But but the question has to be asked, if it made no difference and it didn't happen, then why spend 130 grand on it? It's just why would you do it then? If she's got no proof and it's loaded rubbish and you think it genuinely made no difference. And I think what the the prosecution has to prove isn't whether or not the money was paid or it's the whether or not it did have an effect on the election. It's the motive. If the motive was to, to make the election more likely because you've paid the money, then, then that, I suppose, is probably going to be enough. But then we have a number of other trials, don't we? Uh, not least, there's the one about him fermenting the Capitol Hill insurrection, which resulted in several deaths, <coughs> a lot of jail time for other people. <coughs> Excuse me. I blame the biological warfare experiment I live with. Um, <coughs> but the judge in that case has actually allowed pre-trial arguments, so which could delay... <coughs> the insurrection trial until well after the November the 5th election, which is kind of bizarre that we're, we're not having the insurrection trial first. you think that would be the big one? That'd be the important one. They're having that later. Do you think, I suppose this is a, a strange question, but do you think America's really going to vote for a president who tried to steal the presidency last time? I mean, and when when you see them being interviewed, I think the answer is yes. Actually, when you see his fans being interviewed, I, I don't think they they don't seem to have any kind of normal analysis of the individual they're voting for when you see them being interviewed. And obviously, I'm a little bit biased um, in my view of Trump, uh, as most people on this this side of the pond are. They don't use they don't use the normal criteria one would use. Otherwise, he wouldn't be anywhere near an election, would he? He wouldn't be anywhere near being a candidate, let alone you know being the presidential favourite. Um, so I don't think they use the, the same sort of weight and measures, balances, however one wants to put that, in terms of judgment of his character. Otherwise, he wouldn't be anywhere near it, would he? No. He wouldn't be anywhere near it. Yeah, the fact the fact that he's even being considered after something like that is kind of astonishing. And Mike says, MAGA fans won't care about this conviction, even though it's essentially misusing money they sent him. It does make you wonder how the evangelical right, though, can still support him. <clears throat> that's probably, I think that's supposed to be part of the reason that the evangelical rights endorsement is really part of the um, the impact of the the fact that it was hushed up in the first place. Um, <clears throat> but we'll have to sort of wait and see how things pan out, won't we? I'm sure there will be more on Stormy today. Unfortunately, we can't all watch the live stream. Otherwise, the mirror would be running this 24 hours a day. Um, but we're just going to have to check in later on and keep an eye on things <clears throat> and uh, and see if Mr Trump is jailed by the weekend or not, or, or soon afterwards. There will be an awful lot more coming out on that, I'm certain. Now, um, thank you all for everyone for your questions. Thank you, Jamie, for talking about that. Sorry for my coughing. <clears throat> we're going to have to wind up now. Uh, we have found some good news for you in the world, and here it is. Now, the now, war in Ukraine has dragged on for two long years or more, and it's caused a lot of misery, and a lot of Ukrainians have been welcomed to this country as refugees. But because we're British, here are a family of four no one's going to object to, although you might not want them to move in next door. It's a pride of lions who've moved from Donetsk to Doncaster. Thank you, everyone. From Donetsk to Doncaster and are now able to run in a straight line for the first time ever in their lives. So Asa was kept in a private collection. When the war started, she was moved to Kiev, where uh, when the bombing started, and that's where she had her three cubs. They were then moved to a Polish zoo where they were separated and they couldn't even see sunlight. The cubs could only hear their mother roar, but they couldn't see her. Now, as pictures show, uh, they've finally got a massive eight-acre enclosure. Uh, they're enjoying rolling around in the grass. They can see 
rhinos and antelopes, or they're not allowed to eat any of them. Uh, and it's as close as they can reasonably get to the life that they should have had, in, obviously, in the wide open spaces of the African savannah. Jeremy, is this proof that <clears throat> immigration is a fantastic force for change from which we can all benefit? Jeremy? Jeremy's frozen. Oh, no. I've asked, I've got to say, <laughs> at least he's frozen uh, with a big smile on his face. So that's something that I think we can agree, probably, that, that like I said, while you don't want Asa and her cubs to move in next door to you, per se, um, <clears throat> they, they can be a force for change because, if nothing else, it teaches people who are visiting uh, the, the enclosure in Doncaster there all about what's happening in Ukraine. It's all about how there are still wild animals being kept in private collections, which is, of course, extremely bad for them and shouldn't be encouraged at all. <clears throat> and that if you can see lions close up, I think as David Attenborough said, if you can see something close up, then you can identify with it and try to protect its natural homeland. Although, of course, Doncaster is still not the place that lions really ought to be. But if you had to choose between Donetsk and Doncaster, Donny's going to win, isn't it? Just at the moment. Anyway, right, I don't think we're going to get Jeremy back and my voice is totally going to go. So we'll have to wind up now. Thank you, Jeremy, wherever you may be, for uh, helping today. Thank you, everyone, for taking part. Thank you, Stormy Daniels, just thank you. Um, and we will see you all again on Monday for another edition of the News Agenda. Till then, everybody, stay safe, take care. Tatty, bye.